you've tuned in to the 49ers Rush Podcast, and here is your host, John Chapman. All right, welcome back to another episode of the 49ers Rush Podcast. Um, I know it's been I've been on a little bit of a hiatus, but I've been working um, on a, several different projects. Just want to update you guys. Um, as soon as the season picks up, obviously we're going to have a lot more content with weekly breakdowns just like we did last year. But it's been a great off offseason. Uh, lots of film work done over on my Twitter account if you want to go check that down. I've started putting up audio visual breakdowns of film of a lot of our rookie prospects. And those have been posted to 49ers Hub, which I've started contributing for. So go check out 49ers Hub. Uh, you're probably already with them anyway. And also EatSleepFantasy.com. Um, I've been doing a Dynasty podcast over there. Uh, love fantasy football, so if you are into that kind of stuff, go check out EatSleepFantasy.com. But again, this is the 49ers Rush podcast, and this is kind of my baby. I absolutely love this just because this is my absolute passion. And if you haven't already subscribed, go do that. iTunes, Stitcher, iHeartRadio, YouTube, wherever you get your podcast, we are there. And reviews really help. Uh, we've got several five-star reviews on there already, and so I really do appreciate that and all the help, uh, kind words that have been said. And so it's been a while, so just to kind of update you on what it is that I do, I'm an ex-high school football coach from Dallas that just loves film and loves the 49ers. And so what I do is I just watch film like crazy, uh, copy down my notes as if I was coaching or scouting an opposing team, uh, strengths, weaknesses, things of that nature, and then I share it with you guys. So today what we're going to be doing, we're going to be talking about Dante Pettis, the wide receiver out of Washington, our second pick. And how we got him is we actually traded up to get him, which he is the only wide receiver that was traded up to go get out of the entire NFL draft this year, which is very, very interesting, uh, kind of a weird stat. But we traded up to get him at the number 44 spot, and what we gave up was the number 59 and the number 74 overall pick for Washington, the Redskins number 44 and 142. So basically what we did is we gave up a second and a third, a late second um, and a third for a second and a fifth. And if we go to the old Jimmy Johnson trade chart, which I get it's outdated, but it does serve as a very positive reference point. The 44th pick, which we got for, uh, which we picked Dante Pettis there is equivalent to 460 points. And the 142nd pick, um, was 34 point and a half points, which we ended up selecting DJ Reed, and that came out to 495.5 points. And what's even more interesting is what the Redskins got with what we sent them. So the number 59 overall pick is equivalent to 310 points, and they selected Darius Geis. So this is somebody that we're always going to be kind of linked to to kind of see who is going to have the better career, Dante Pettis or Darius Geis. And they also got with the number 74 overall pick, or which was equal to 220 points, uh, Garon Christian, offensive tackle out of Louisville. So we got 494 points, and we gave away 534. Uh, points total so we were at a 36 point deficit in this trade according to that chart which is equivalent to about the 139th pick overall so nobody really got fleeced or anything there were no picks for the future involved so this trade has been completed but for some reason there was something there that Kyle Shanahan and John Lynch really loved this guy so now what we're going to do is we're going to jump back and let's just dive into who this kid is Dante Pettis um, he had an ankle injury in November, and so he missed out on the combine, but was able to make it to his pro day after only working out for two weeks after he was medically cleared from his ankle injury. And he even played through his ankle injury. He hasn't missed a lot of games. Um, his pro day workout numbers were pretty solid. Um he uh, just kind of his height and measurables. He is six feet, um, half inch tall, so six feet almost flat, and he weighs 186. Very, very light. Um, he is built as a slot kind of receiver, but he is not. I repeat, he is not a slot guy, and we'll talk more about that. Um, actually, less than 18 percent of his snaps at Washington were taken from the slot role. He played outside almost completely. But back to his pro day numbers, he ran a 4.4740 and had a 10.5 broad jump and a 36-inch vertical. Now, outside of those things, I mean, obviously he's got the speed. Um, he didn't do a lot of the short area quickness things. Nine and a half inch hands, that's pretty average. 32 uh, inch arm length, that's pretty average. Wingspan 77, that's a little bit better. 
But again, he, nothing jumps off the page when you are looking at him or his measurables. Where he uh, kind of takes the cake and where he stands out is he has amazing hands. He's never dropped a pass. You cannot see. You can't find a clip of him dropping the ball, and he gets insane separations on routes play in and play out now uh, his family background is very interesting because he comes from a family of professional athletes his father Gary Pettis five-time gold glove winner uh, played center field in the majors and he coaches now he's the third base coach for the Astros now Um, so obviously you know growing up in that setting and realizing kind of what it takes to be a professional athlete he understands he has a sport there his cousin Austin was a wide receiver out of Boise State if you remember Um, he played four years um, in the NFL as a receiver didn't really catch on too big he was with uh, the Lions for a little bit and Dante Pettis came out and said that you know, they asked him, have you talked to your cousin Austin Pettis and has he helped you through this process? And he said, yeah, he's actually coached me for the last three months, day in and day out, working out what to prepare for, what to expect and all these things. So uh, a couple things just off the field that he does. He is a big time photographer and actually has an Instagram page where he does all kinds of photography. His uh, Instagram tag handle, if you're interested, is Christopher underscore Robin eight. So uh, Christopher underscore Robin eight. And he loves FIFA soccer. It, He's a pretty cool interview. He just he comes off as just kind of a very wholesome kid, uh, kind of innocent and chill. He's, he's not like a big look at me, look at me kind of guy. He's just really laid back, kind of California kid. And a lot of that is he went to J. Sarah Catholic High School in Capistrano, California, um, just outside of San Clemente, south of L.A. And he did everything. Uh, ran track, basketball, football. Uh, he was a beast in basketball. There's an awesome clip on YouTube, which um, if you go to my Twitter page, it's on JL underscore Chapman, JL underscore C-H-A-P-M-A-N. Um, I put up a couple videos and retweeted a couple of those of him. One of the videos that went viral about a month ago was him lobbing the ball off the backboard and catching it and doing an insane windmill dunk. This kid has hops. Again, 36-inch vertical, and he just he's like a gazelle, man. The kid just gets off the floor. And he was ranked as the number 29 player uh, shooting guard in California coming out of high school. So the kid can ball. And track was, man, he was probably better at track than he was basketball. Uh, he made the state finals uh, in the 200 for the state of California. He long jumped 24 feet 7 inches, which is just that's a beast that's a beast jump uh, 100 meter dash he ran a 10.98 so anything under 11 is considered elite 200 meter he ran a 21.41 again uh, he, the kid just does it all 44 foot 7 inch triple jump the kid is just very well rounded just an athletic specimen now his stats in high school are pretty interesting at football his senior year he had 50 catches for 889 yards and 11 touchdowns. And if there is one theme that you got to take away from Dante Pettis, he gets into the end zone. Uh, high school, all the time. College, all the time. And for a team that was pretty um, just inefficient, would probably be the best word, of getting into the end zone, think about all those field goals that Robbie Gold had last year, even when Jimmy G took over. We got a guy here that finishes, and he gets into the end zone. And so that's probably – that's one of the things that I just keep taking away is it, it you, he just gets in there. He scores touchdowns. So he was recruited by Chris Peterson, the head coach of Boise State, to go to Boise State. But when Chris Peterson went to take the Washington job, he called uh, Dante Pettis and said, hey, man, we still want you here. So if you want to stay with Boise State, that's fine. And Dante Pettis even said that if Chris Peterson didn't offer him a scholarship to go to Washington, he was still planning on going to Boise State. Uh, Obviously, the family connections there with his cousin and all that kind of stuff. And he was rated the number 49 wide receiver in the country out of high school. Very, very small, undersized. And that's a big reason why. Because his stats, uh, they, they match the elite production that you saw with higher ranked guys. But again, being six foot, 180 pounds, that kind of hurts you. So, how did he do in college? Well, pretty freaking awesome. He broke the NCAA record for the most punt return touchdowns. This was a record that was held by Deshaun Jackson from Cal. Um, he ran nine punt returns back for a touchdown in his career. 
and he only had 90 returns total. So one out of every 10 punt returns went for a touchdown. That is unreal. And you could say, well, yeah, he probably just has one big play and then a lot of bad ones. No, absolutely not. 14.2 yards per return on his career. That's just, that's bonkers. So if we look at Trent Taylor, who is probably our current punt returner, Trent Taylor, his bread and butter, he doesn't return anything for a touchdown. That's not who he is. Uh, He didn't do that in college either. But what he does is he averages a first down on every punt return. He had a little over a nine-yard average in the NFL, which is which is really, really good and very efficient. But what happens here with Dante Pettis is not only do you keep that efficiency in still getting that first down, but the big play potential is there as well. Um, his career stats as far as the receiver, he had 163 receptions for 2,256 yards, 24 touchdowns. So his 24 receiving touchdowns with his nine Punt return touchdowns, that's 33 total TDs in four years. And you can just see 33 touchdowns is monumental in the college game. Uh, He played in 52 games for Washington, and he only missed one game in his entire career there in 2014. So that's basically three straight years without missing a game. Again, durability, this has been a constant theme with our top-end draft picks. Uh, You can say whatever you want about Reuben Foster, but we want people that play. And if you don't play, then you're not going to be sticking around. They will look at what happened to Trent Brown, right? He wasn't a great scheme fit and not very durable. He had to go. So um, he even completed three passes on trick play, so he's got a little bit of an arm. Um, Not not a kind of gun, but he he, he throws a pretty nice lob pass. Uh, he's a 2017 consensus first team All American, and he was the Paul Horney Award finalist, uh, which is basically the word the award for most versatile player in the NFL or in, in college. And Saquon Barkley won that, so as a, he was up against some pretty stiff competition. But he was a finalist for that uh, award, and he's an English major with an emphasis on creative writing. Um, he has not graduated yet. Uh, they do have the quarter system in the Pac-12, but thankfully they got rid of that stupid ass rule where people couldn't practice if they were drafted until they were finished with college so um he will graduate but he is allowed to he's taking part in otas and all those things right now so no big deal there so let's jump into film breakdown and again i cannot stress it enough um if if you're somewhat confused or you want to see some visual representation of what i'm talking about here again go to my twitter page it's pinned so it's the very first one that you will see it says uh dante pettis audio slash video breakdown of his film and I go through and talk about his footwork and kind of what sets him apart and where he wins and where he needs to improve. So all of that is there. If you want the visual package, go check that out. But he is an amazing route runner, um, uses just beyond elite juking skills to set up the pass. So he's one of those players that is, he's amazing without the ball. Uh, kind of like that Steph Curry. I love whenever announcers talk about Steph Curry. Yeah, he's a shooter and all that stuff. But the things that he does when the ball is not in his hands makes him that much better. Uh, elite run blocker. He, <laughs> it's weird only being 186 pounds. He gets after it, and you'll see him put some guys on the ground. And the main reason why he's so successful as a run blocker is it takes two things to run block. It takes effort, and it takes footwork. And he has those in spades. And he will go after, and he blocks to the whistle. He uh, pushes corners and safeties out of bounds. Just because his feet never stop, he understands leverage. And it's it's almost like he enjoys that. So that is that's what's... Again, it's not why you draft a wide receiver, but it sure as hell helps. And it's so much easier to get a guy out there that's willing to block. And if you look at the 49ers wide receiver core that we have in place, man, they are physical and they get after it. Pierre Garçon, absolutely top-notch run blocker. Uh, Marquise Goodwin, even though he's a speedster guy, he is physical as all get out. You can go back and watch his college film at Texas where he's de people. He loves to crack back like he's got that persona about him. Trent Taylor's mean as hell, obviously. Um, And Kittle, good Lord, Kittle wants to kill people. So uh, continuing with that theme. So even though he's smaller, he's still very, very physical. Um, Catches everything and has elite body control. 
There are several different um, highlight reel catches where you'll see him extend and drag his toe to the sideline or um, the end zone to make sure that it's a catch. And it's funny, I put together a clip uh, of a bunch of different passes that he caught on the sideline and drug his toe, and everybody was like, well, that's not an NFL catch. Well, he didn't have to do that. You only have to drag one foot in college, and he did that uh, routinely. So obviously every single wide receiver that comes from college to the NFL has to make that adjustment to a (laughs) two-foot drag, but he's got all of the tools to be able to do that. His hands are just unreal. Uh, You will never see the ball get into his body. Um, He catches the ball fully extended away, which is, you know, the term that's usually used is he is the definition of a natural pass catcher. And what you don't want is the ball to get into your body or your shoulder pads or your stomach, because once it does that, it can bounce off uh, and you almost have to trap it. But whenever you go out and extend your arms fully all the way away from your body and look through your hands to catch the ball it increases your catch rate uh, which he will have a very very high catch rate because he'll create amazing windows for the quarterback to Jimmy G to throw the ball so very excited about that now the player comparison that I had for him is Golden Tate uh, but without the bulk. So you take about 15 pounds off of Golden Tate, and that is exactly who this kid is. Golden Tate leads the NFL year in and year out with yards after catch, uh, yak yards, the Jerry Rice stat, right? That's who Dante Pettis will be. Uh, catches everything, runs every single route, r- lines up all over the field, uh, gets separation, and is just an absolute gamer. So it, it would be nice if he could add a little bit of weight. I'd love to see him play around 195 to 200. You don't want to get him too much more than that because his speed will start to decrease. But let's jump into what his scheme fit and future is with the 49ers because, again, we have a decent wide receiver core, but that's it. We are just decent there. Um, Lynch, one of the quotes that he had was, you know what, Uh, Dante Pitt, this is a quote from Lynch, he's very versatile and dynamic and is a four-down player, not a three-down guy. And again, what he's meaning there is he's got to be played every single wide receiver position, not just in the slot. And we've already seen this in OTAs. They are throwing the entire playbook at him from all three wide receiver positions, outside, flanker, slot, uh, basically the X, Y, and Z um, spots. Um, and he's backing up all three. So our, our three starters are going to be Pierre Garçon's going to be our one, Marquise Goodwin will be our two, and Trent Taylor in the slot. However, in Kyle Shanahan's system – it is not just these are our three guys and they stay out there. You got to think about how many snaps Lewis Murphy got last year. You got to think about uh, Victor Bolden. You got to think Kendrick Bourne. You got to think about, I mean, Aldrick Robinson. All these guys on the field all the time. And we had one injury, and all of a sudden we had one of the most shallow wide receiving cores in the entire NFL. So, one, this is a depth play. Two, Pierre Garçon's pretty long in the tooth. He's 31 years old. And now he's not a speed guy, and that's not where he wins, Pierre Garçon. But now we have somebody that, let's say an injury happens, our starting rotation does not take a step back. We have depth now. And instead of picking up guys off the street like Lewis Murphy, we have solid talent that we can put out to play there. Um, Kyle Shanahan went on to say he can run all the routes. He fills a lot of spots for us and does a little bit of everything. One of the best bump and run wide receivers in the draft. And that's the thing with this. You cannot get your hands on him. He is amazing against press coverage. And any time the, <laughs> the corner got up in his face to pressure him, they miss. They whiff. Like he's so shifty, jukey out of his right. His stem moves are unreal. And so it, you talk about playing Seattle whenever they want to do that press man stuff. That's great. This is a guy that can play against Aqib Tlaib. This is a guy that can play against uh, Shaquille Griffin. This is a guy that can play against Marcus Peters because he's not one of those guys that gets intimidated. He's coming out of the Pac-12. He's been the number one wide receiver. Even way last year when John Ross was drafted out of Washington, John Ross was not the number one wide receiver. And if you go back and watch John Ross's film from two years ago, the whole time you're going to be like, man, who's that guy on the other field? Holy cow, did you see that catch? Like, he was the guy that everybody gravitated their coverage to, not John Ross. So this guy has been doing it for a while. A um, couple quotes from Pettis. 
Um, he said, I view myself as a receiver, not really a punt returner. Um, everything I do and I am for is at receiver, not as a returner. So the returner is extra. It's probably where he's going to find himself onto the field first. Um, but he's one of those guys that's going to be out there from probably the third series on. And so he'll be out there for the third series as outside guy. And then the fourth series is slot guy. Then the fifth series is the other outside guy. And they're just going to kind of move him around to see where he is. Uh, Pet- uh, Pettis goes on to say, my best attribute is de- decision making and being aggressive to the point that I have to catch everything. And, and we saw that. He doesn't drop anything. Uh, Chris Peterson, who never talks to the media, uh, you could find one quote. And they uh, basically, he said, if you give him space, he is going to make something happen. And that's basically who he is. So hopefully you enjoyed uh, this breakdown of Dante Pettis. Again, I can't stress this enough. Just go check out Twitter. I don't even care if you follow me, but go watch that video and leave a comment. Let me know what you think. And again, if you haven't already, hit subscribe on iTunes and leave us a review. But that is JL underscore Chapman, C-H-A-P-M-A-N. And stay strong, faithful. We got more coming for you.